Namaste. So now, if you've been following this series, which I hope you have, because you'll need the background to understand these last couple of episodes, we're going to talk about the stage beyond neither perception nor non-perception. And the Buddha calls this themeless concentration. Further, Ananda, the monk, not attending to the perception of the dimension of nothingness, not attending to the perception of the dimension of neither perception nor non-perception, attends to the singleness based on the themeless concentration of awareness. His mind takes pleasure, finds satisfaction, settles and indulges in its themeless concentration of awareness. This is beautiful. This is Pouten. This is the very, very next stage to full enlightenment. Why? For the first time, he says, concentration of awareness. We're not dealing anymore with concentration of consciousness whether our consciousness is on earth or space or nothingness or emptiness or whatever, for the first time we're dealing with pure awareness. This is a very significant thing. Why? Because consciousness always has an object. Consciousness is a stick with two ends. Here, let me get a stick. <laughs> Here's the stick. Is it better this way or that way? So on one end you have awareness. On the other end you have the object of awareness. So this is duality. Huh? Because you have two ends. One is the cause and one is the effect. But it doesn't matter at this point. Because the only thing that's significant now is that the stick has two ends. And what do you find in the middle? I. <laughs> Myself. I am conscious of this. And it doesn't really matter whether it's something with form, like a village, or wilderness, or earth, or something formless like space, nothingness, emptiness, like that. It doesn't matter. There is still the question of who is conscious of this? And that who, of course, the answer is always I. I am conscious. <laughs> but we know that I is something dependently arisen. In fact, consciousness is dependently arisen. It depends on what? Sankara. And Sankara depend on ignorance. Well, there's a cute little bird outside my window. He's only about this long. <laughs> anyway, so consciousness depends on sankara. Sankara depend on ignorance. But what does ignorance depend on? Awareness. Without awareness, there is nothing else. So the thing about awareness is, awareness is only aware of itself. It has no object, or another way to say it is that awareness, the object of awareness, is awareness itself. So this is the perfect stage. This is Nibbana itself. This is the aim. This is the goal. This is what we've been working toward step by step 
Uh, one uh, viewer commented, I don't see the need for all these different steps. Isn't nothingness just nothingness? <laughs> well, there's nothingness and then there's emptiness and then there's awareness. See, even with nothingness, there's still somebody who's conscious of nothingness. If you try this yourself, which I certainly hope you do, you will get to experience this directly. So everybody is cultivating this conception of I. And whether we have a, a low, gross conception of I as being the body or whatever, or we have a higher, more abstract idea of I being the, the conscious one, uh, doesn't matter. It's still duality. It's still a cause of suffering. It still creates karma that binds you to the process of birth and death. So the only way to get beyond that is to concentrate awareness on itself. And in that case, there is no object. It's themeless. Oops, just lost power. Oh well, it's okay. Everything's running on battery. <laughs> so, to have themeless concentration means there is no second thing to be an object. You follow? There is only the awareness of itself. Concentration is a beautiful thing. And the reason it's beautiful is that it's naturally pleasurable. It doesn't need any other object. Try it. Just concentrate your mind on anything. It doesn't matter what it is. Of course, the best thing to concentrate on is yourself, your own awareness. Concentrate awareness on awareness. And this is the idea behind the uh, technique of the golden flower. The secret of the golden flower, which we covered extensively uh, a couple of years back. But anyway, let's see what the Buddha says about this. He discerns that whatever disturbances that would exist based on the perception of the dimension of nothingness are not present. Whatever disturbances that would exist based on the perception of the dimension of neither perception nor non-perception are not present. And there is only this modicum of disturbance that connected with the six sensory spheres dependent on this very body with life as its condition. He discerns that this mode of perception is empty of the perception of the dimension of nothingness. This mode of perception is empty of the perception of the dimension of neither perception nor non-perception. There is only this non-emptiness that connected with the six sensory spheres dependent on this very body with life as its condition. Thus, he regards it as empty of whatever is not there. Whatever remains, he discerns as present. There is this. And so this, his entry into emptiness accords with actuality, is undistorted in meaning and pure. So this is like coming out of the other end <laughs> We're coming out of the other side of the process of the virtualization of attention, of the concentration on ever more subtle objects. So we are concentrating the awareness on awareness. Does that mean we're not aware of the body? No, the body is there. In other words, we have gone through a series 
of progressively more subtle objects of concentration. But even after all that, even after experiencing nothingness, we still have to come back to the reality of the body. Now, wait a minute. Oh, the light's back. <laughs> Remember, the Buddha's teaching is apophatic. He doesn't say a lot of things. He doesn't say that <laughs> along the way of this progressively more subtle concentration, we have lost track of the ego. He doesn't say that we're no longer dependent on the body for our sense of being, existence. He doesn't say that we have given up all our attachments. He doesn't say we've given up all our possessions, our sense of this is mine. He doesn't say these things. He doesn't say that we have stopped all sankhara. He doesn't say it. Why? Because as soon as you grant the mind any existence at all, you give it power. And then it becomes very difficult to give up, in fact, impossible, to give up the phenomena associated with the mind. So if one thinks, I have to get rid of this ego, <laughs> he simply strengthens the ego. If one thinks, I have to stop thoughts, of course, the thought of stopping thoughts becomes a thought, and you can't stop thoughts. If you think, oh, I have to get rid of this uh, attachment to different objects, then your attachment to being unattached is just as heavy an attachment as any possession. No, what's happening here is that the Buddha, you know, it, it's like when you go to the doctor when you're a kid and you're going to get a shot. And he says, hey, look at this lollipop. And with the other hand, he's giving you the injection. <laughs> he takes your attention off the thing that hurts. So the Buddha is the most expert doctor. He gives you this series of meditations, concentrations. And in the process, you have to drop all these other things. But you don't even notice because your attention is on the object of the meditation. Isn't that cool? See, that's apophysis. That is the leading the mind or leading the attention, I should say, away from the mind. Just forget, it, just forget about it. Like Nisargadatta Maharaj says, at some point you simply become uninterested in the mind. <laughs> the mind can't show you anything that has any interest for you. So you just drop it. You, you just ignore it. You just forget about it. There's no need to make a big effort to stop the mind, to stop the ego, to stop sankhara or becoming. See, the real cure for the mind is in simply directing the attention away from it. I remember when, when I was a kid, I was learning to ride a bicycle. And of course, at first I had the training wheels, right? And okay, I was somehow or other riding with the training wheels, but it was very awkward. So my mother said, tell you what, we'll uh, go out without the training wheels and I'll hold the back of the bicycle so you don't fall. So I was, okay, okay, we'll do that. So we went out and our ho house was near a hill. So we went up the hill and then we started coming back down the hill and I started going pretty fast. And so I was going along, riding along on the bicycle. 
And I look back to say, hey, Ma, I'm doing good, huh? And I realize, oh, she's not there. <laughs> she had let go. And I was riding without the training wheels, doing just fine. So it's the same way. It's the same way here. <laughs> Once you go through this whole series of trainings uh, and get your attention settled on these more and more subtle objects, without any effort, you let go of all the things that cause suffering. And then you finally get to the real source of joy, which is when your awareness is concentrated on itself. That's the secret. Aung Tat Sat. Buddha Sarnai. <laughs>